couple of announcements, well, not a couple, one announcement, chairs. So uh, one decision has been thrown out there. If you have any objections, please put it in the San Jose channel. But uh, the, the, the decision is to move forward and buy some brown chairs temporarily, these brown chairs that people like. So if you have any objections to that, just please voice that in the San Jose channel on Discord. Good? Cool. Uh, so before I begin, I just want to say uh, it's truly a blessing to be here in this community, right? Uh, it's the opportunity to give the sermon. Um, these are things that we get to reflect upon, you know, all the men, uh, because we probably only give it two times a, a year, if that. And so we put our, our effort into it, and it is a blessing if you really think about it, right? So I just want to say I may not... Um, talk to you guys all individually, but I truly appreciate being this, a part of this community and what you all bring to this community. Mashallah, so praise God for that. Um, so let's dive in. I got some slides here. I want to ask you guys a question. I'm going to put something on the board or on the slide, so hopefully folks over there can see it. Do you guys know what this is? Have you guys gotten these in your emails? Usually around the year end, right? Year in review, a lot of times it's from retailers, restaurants, some of these things I'm probably not that happy to show because that means I went there probably too much. <laughs> I took one flight on Southwest last year. I promise you it's not because of that whole debacle, but we just didn't go anywhere. Uh, we got a Walmart plus, you know, how much money I saved. <laughs> yeah, that's on there. Uh, Chick-fil-A, I mean, I, <laughs> I gained a lot of points there. There's another restaurant I won't name over on the right. I went and saw some movies. You can see the movie uh, icons there. Starbucks, we went there all, you know, when we were in a bind. So you guys probably see those. They, basically, they collect your data. You're going there, you're checking in, and they're telling you what you did that year, right? You, you bought a bunch of stuff. Please come back and buy more stuff, right? We're going to give you more rewards. So this happens because data is like, proliferated. It's everywhere now. It's being collected. So. That concept, right, year in review. So we see these, but what's kind of the one most popular one that we, we all kind of look forward to if you listen to music, right? Spotify, right? Spotify rap. That kind, that's kind of the one that started it all. So here's mine. Yeah, so this is not exactly what I wanted to see when it came out. My Spotify algorithm has been changed completely since Zane's been born, all the Wiggles, right? So if you guys know the Wiggles, it's all the Wiggles stuff, Propeller, I know it by heart now. So I can tell you, once I saw this, I immediately kicked him off my account. He's on Riyash's account now, <laughs> not on mine. I would like my algorithm back. That's the one place I'm like, I want the algorithm to tell me, you know, what I want to hear. Everything else, you can keep it. I don't, that's fine. So <laughs> all jokes aside, you know, let's take this concept, right? What if we had a submitter year in review? What if you, at the year end, got a nice little email package telling you what you were doing? If you think about that, right? What if it's something that just not every year you get it pretty often? What if it's something that you get at the end, right? This is something that actually exists, and we don't need an email to tell us. But this is kind of what I want to talk about today. So with a little help from Noah here, I mocked up a submitter year in review. So let's just kind of use that so if you guys will humor me and for illustrative purposes. What if we got a submitter year in review? So I didn't trademark that company name, but you know, if we want to start an app, let's do it. <laughs> um, your top righteous trait this year was reminders, right? You reminded 47,000 times in the best possible manner. <laughs> Sorry, it's not too, it's to be bigger, but if you can't see it, right? Percent of submitters, okay? What if you got something like that? Okay, great, so I'm on the right path. I'm doing it the right way, okay? What about another side, right? Your top, I'm trying to be humorous here, okay? So just play with me. I'm not trying to make it, I'm trying to keep it light. Your top sin this year was theft, okay? You pinched 327 items. You're in the top 5% of kleptomaniacs, okay? Get it, right? So the next one. Your top sin this year was anger, getting a little closer to home, right? You got angry 845,000 times. Your submitter community, right? We don't want that, but 
what if this is something that you actually got a, re a reality check upon, right? So this is really the concept that I'm trying to convey, convey here. Now let's get to the real one that everyone likes in the, the, the Spotify, right? I got Noah's help on this one. What if it gave you a nice list of your top sins, your top strives, how many prayers you missed here, hopefully zero, your top righteous trait, all in a nice package, right? So I just kind of threw something together here, you know, bad behavior, suspicion, anger, backbiting, missed zakat, but strives where you were on top of your salat, zakat, maybe 99% of the time you did it on time, you strove for any charity that was available, at Quran study you were engaged, you were participating, you're listening, and, you know, passing the message. Maybe that was a top trait for that year, right? And maybe overall you were just very good in moderation in everything you do, right? So this is a kind of concept that you can take, right? So other things you can think of, like how many times was I saying Bismillah Akbar Rahim uh, when waking up, before you eat, before you drive, many more. But the, the list is endless, and I'm, my point is let's not go through it all today, right? It's that concept. But we know that if we had a Submitify app like this, we actually are going to see this at the end of our life, right? So your life wrapped. You're going to have a record, right? So in 75.13, it says, the human being will be informed on that day of everything he did to advance himself and everything he did to regress himself. The human being will be his own judge. No excuses will be accepted. So this is a real thing. We may enjoy it, you know, year in and year out. What do we do at this restaurant, re retail? music, what did I listen to, but if you really kind of put it in context, this is our life. This is going to come up. And so what I want to talk about here is the common thread. And so the, the kind of goal for my sermon today, after that long intro, um, is intentional awareness, right? Are you aware and intentionally aware of what's going on every day, every moment, every year, how you conduct yourself as a submitter? Um, and if you really think about it, all sermons can really be connected back to this concept on some level, right? Uh, I, I caught last week, Ali J mentioned consciousness. That's another synonym for being aware, right? Over the years, there's been some great sermons that I can recall off the top of my head. One that really came off the, um, right away was autopilot submission, Omid, right? So this is something that has to do with awareness. Uh, another one that came up is the mentality, how, how you conduct yourself as a submitter. LP gave one with the uh, mentality of a submitter. The one that comes up a lot of, and time and time again, what really matters? Wamid, right? Big day tomorrow. <laughs> Synonyms for awareness, right? Understanding, knowledge, reflection, mindfulness, concerned with is a phrase we hear a lot in the Quran. Conscientiousness, realization, cognizance, take note. That one comes up a lot. And so, subhanAllah, awareness is a really fascinating topic to me because it builds upon itself continuously. It never ends. Awareness takes the shape of knowledge, or it can. You learn it. You gain it. You know what you don't know, and you're seeking it, right? And you seek that answer through guidance from God. And then we also know that there's knowledge out there that we don't know. We want to seek that, right? And we accept this fact that we don't know it at this point in time, and we're peace, at peace with it, but we're aware and we know that per 5101, God will reveal it to us in due time if we deserve it. So awareness is even more valuable when you're intentional about it, when it's knowledge or otherwise. So the next thing I want to talk about is the awareness of God's system. Awareness is only possible with an understanding and an acceptance of God's system. Right? And God's system covers a variety of things. I'm not just going to go through everything in God's system. I think you know, it's something we can discuss otherwise. But Specifically, when we talk about God's system, what I want to address is awareness of what we're supposed to do in this life, awareness of what we're supposed to avoid in this life. That's God's system when you really break it down to a very simple concept. In 45, well, there was 5101, I didn't hit it, but um, 4522, God created the heavens and the earth for a specific purpose. <laughs> in order to pay each soul for whatever it earned without the least injustice. In the footnote, it says, God granted this life as a precious chance to redeem ourselves, denounce our ancient alliance with Satan, and rejoin God's kingdom. See the introduction in, in Appendix 7. Right? Spe specific purpose, understanding, being aware of that specific purpose, number one. We have, we have to know that, right? Because a part of God's system is also understanding what we're supposed to avoid here, as I said. So retribution, 
consequence of sin. 853, God does not change a blessing unless they have, he has bestowed upon any people unless they themselves decide to change. God is here omniscient. So God has blessed us if we're on the right path and we understand God's system and we're following it and we're blessed. That's, that's the way it works. It's only on us if we change it, right? If we change that state. In 10.7, it's most likely the change is coming from this verse, right? In verses like this. Preoccupation with this world. Those who are not expecting to meet us and are preoccupied with this worldly life and are content with it and refuse to heed our proofs. These have incurred hell as their ultimate abode as a consequence of their own works. So we understand the retribution is a consequence of your sin, and this is what happens as a result of your own works. Okay? A couple more verses uh, that further illustrate this point. This is a consequence of what your hands have sent forth. God is never unjust towards the creatures. So bad things are a consequence of our own deeds. God is never unjust. That's coming for us. So that's establishing further, again, God's system. God does not afflict an, an atom's weight of injustice. This is God's system. It's, it's very fair. We understand that when something bad happens, again, it comes from us. Uh, the part I wanted to also highlight there is, on the contract, contrary, he multiplies the reward manifold for the righteous work. So there's no injustice, and we get even manifold the reward. Okay, so once you're aware of God's system um, and how it works, only then can you become aware of your own shortcomings, right? Because otherwise, you're just floating around uh, unaware. And that's really what it comes down to in the context of my, my sermon. Uh, once you're aware of God's system, then you'll understand the shortcomings and areas of purification through God's mercy. Right? That's how the system works. So in uh, 4230, it says anything that bad happens to you is a consequence of your own deeds, and he overlooks many of your sins, right? So to, get, to take that concept even further, God also um, mentions, as explained by the Covenant in Quran 3043, that God only allows Satan to inflict a consequence to a precise limit, and that's the uh, Adam's weight of injustice. That's what it's referring to, right? To paraphrase, uh, in that... Um, Quran study, it talks about a dollar value. So if you, for instance, forgot to say Bismillah in the morning and you wanted to put a dollar value in regards to Hello? All right. We're back on. Um, where was I? So, um, yeah, the dollar value, right? So in that... In that audio, it says Satan can only inflict $75 worth of um, consequence for forgetting to say Bismillah in the morning, right? So if you kind of think about that, there's a scale to all the sins. So that's how it works in the system. Um, but again, the whole concept that I'm trying to get across here is that God does not inflict an Adam's weight of injustice. So being aware of that system, how it works, if something happens to you, it's only in proportion to the sin, right? Uh, I want to talk about this further and dig a, li dig a little bit deeper, but tubalala, let us repent. Alhamdulillah, wa Praise be to God, I bear witness there is no God besides God. So let's go a little bit further on this concept, right? We talked about God's system, the awareness of that. The question I, I kind of pose after that is what motivates us to be aware and improve ourselves after we understand and we have the awareness of God's system, how it works, right? There's a multitude of ways, and it may vary based on you know, how you work as an individual. But one thing that we do know is that with that understanding and purpose here in God's system, uh, when we turn to motivation, we know that there is a lower limit. God gives us a verse in the Quran that essentially is the minimum motivating factors that we should have. And by no means is this simple. I'm not trying to downplay it. It does not equate to ease, right? But we're given... All right, where did the, there it is. Minimum requirements for salvation. It's the awareness of each criteria. 
Okay? We believe in God alone, and we know that there's a purpose to our existence here on earth. We just talked about that, right? So we're aware that God exists. God alone is the one that's running everything. God alone is uh, the most powerful, right? And the second criteria we talk about the hereafter. As I had mentioned earlier with the illustration of the years in review, or life in review for our, in our instance, we know that we'll be held accountable once the last day, the day of judgment, comes. So believers are mindful, another synonym again for awareness. Believers are mindful of the day of judgment, 4218. Challenging it are those who do not believe in it. As for those who believe, they are concerned about it, and they know that it is the truth. Absolutely, those who deny the hour have gone far astray. Mindful, concerned with it. Again, all concepts around this awareness. And in the last portion of that verse in 569, we understand that last criteria, the hereafter, right? Um, uh, sorry, righteousness. Um, the righteousness uh, required in order to uh, attain the hereafter is what I, I meant to say. We're aware that it requires soul growth while we're here on earth. We're aware that it's going to take a lot of effort, dedication, purification, along with God's mercy to attain salvation because of one of these, the most powerful verses I believe in the Quran. Uh, and when it comes to awareness and understanding. 2274. They do not value God as he should be valued. God is the most powerful, the Almighty. It's quite literally the single most important point of awareness we can have as humans on earth. Valuing God as he should be valued, it, it encompasses so much. We have an acute awareness of God, exactly well, how we should value God. We, sh we should understand that point. In fact, God tells us in many verses to note the consequences or be aware of others. This is a mercy from God uh, through the Quran. And we're basically given answers to the test, to the, put it simply. Be aware. Don't do what they did. Be aware. Do this. If we put it very simply, right? So even in the best and happiest of times, we should be aware. Aware of God of how God has blessed us with bountiful blessings and provisions, right? We have plenty of things to be happy for. We should be, reflect and be aware of that fact each and every day. Uh, be aware that when we're going through that and we have those blessings and provisions, that we're doing something right, that we should continue along this path, but we should also strive for more. This is how God's system works. And in the lowest of times, we should also be aware, be aware of how God... Um, allows us to reflect, and that we have the understanding that it is, it is the time for reflection, for even more critical introspection, to identify maybe something that we've overlooked, because now we're in a kind of a, a dire situation, or chose not to consider for improvement or repentance previously. So these are times that really bring you back. They bring you closer to God. You should be understanding what you're going through, because we have an awareness of God's system. Um, you know, one example that I, I recently became aware of is really not grasping the concept in the Quran and some verses and, and truly have an understanding on it and making progress on it until you have a catalyst, some kind of trigger point that makes you, oh, I get it now, right? Having a kid, all those verses around that, right? It's, it's, it becomes abundantly clear what it means to uh, have a kid and the arduous journey that is, right? The kid will help you understand the verses and around how hard it is to have a child, ultimately. And if you don't have kids, I mean, maybe you won't ever feel that. But it's also a catalyst to be a motivation of being aware of certain areas of purification that may not have come to light previously around patience, around anger, around all of these areas, right? And this is just one example, right? Another example I, I want to share as kind of a personal sharing is when I first met Riyasha. So some of you guys know our story. This was, feels like a long time ago now. Uh, but when I first met her, this is when I became aware of submission. So praise God for that, right? Most of all. Awareness of Riyasha's uh, dedication to God and her journey to move here to the San Jose community to be a part of it. That was one of the reasons why I wanted to say that right at the beginning of the sermon. At that point when that happened, I became more painstakingly aware of my plans for my life going forward. I didn't know where I was going at that point. But I knew at some point God needed to be a part of it. That's, that's all I knew. And I'm not taking, you know, patting myself on the back or anything, but I'm just saying, I'm pointing out the awareness played a factor there because of my circumstances, and there, and there was a catalyst. I had awareness that God is important in my life, 
but there was no catalyst, there was no fight or flight motivation to make that change. And no, um, you know, desire to move forward and, and make it. And so when that happened in my life, that was, I can literally put, you know, put a point in that time in my life to say this is where it changed. And I'm sure we all have those stories, right? It's, it's so awesome to hear how people got the message. I love hearing it. That was one of my most favorite parts of the conferences when we were attending those, is hearing those new stories. And I love hearing them. Um, but that change is really all, the only one that mattered at all in my life and I'm sure in your lives, right? So praise God Almighty for guidance. It's, it's truly, that's the motivation we should strive for. That's the awareness we want to go for, right? But let's keep moving forward in the, in the, in the time that I have left. So how, when we talk about motivation, right, and what motivates us to be aware and improve ourselves, uh, how can we, in a practical sense, talk about it? So this is what I want to talk about next. Sorry, my slides are out of order. Think about this funnel, right, as a time in your life, right, from left to right, sequentially, as you go through your life. Let's take one of the year in review sins, your top sin, right? Let's, let's say it was anger. Um, how does that apply, right? So this is kind of a visualization of how it may work. And I know you guys are probably reading through it, but let's go through it together. Let's say anger is an issue for you. And your first step is that you just simply need to be aware of that fact. So if, you, if you just deny it and you just say, oh, I don't have, I'm not, I don't get angry. But others do, you've already failed, right? So the awareness evolves over time. But at first, you have to know what you're, what's happening and how you do get angry, and if it is an issue for you. But let's say you do become aware. Now your awareness shifts on how to eliminate that weakness as fast as possible, or at least it should as a submitter. At first, others are certainly aware that you have this weakness as it's probably evident in your actions and maybe your outburst, hopefully not. But it's there. People will uh, see it. Submitters hopefully will be reminding you. This is how God's system works. <laughs> So over time, if you're following God's system, right, you're able to suppress your anger per 3, 134. Maybe those outbursts and actions become less frequent over time, right? In 3, 133, it says you eagerly race towards forgiveness. And so now you're doing that more often when you notice it's happening in those situations. At some point, hopefully in the future, you see it becoming less and less as a result of this system, right? You're able to suppress your anger to the point that others notice and perceive you're a changed person. That's what you should strive for at the very least, right? But the, pur the purpose is not to have a better perception in our fellow submitters' eyes. That's not the purpose, but that, that is a benefit. What is the purpose? It's to do it for your own soul and this for the sake of God, right? So let's just say you're beco you've become keenly aware of this weakness and you purposely, purposefully conduct yourself to avoid this anger because you know you have it, okay? However, you and God are the only ones that know inside it may be happening still. So it's evolved over time. It's not external anymore. You've been able to suppress it as per the Quran, as per these verses, right? You may build awareness around it and control it, but not let it manifest externally. But you can apply this concept to really anything, right? Your last stage, ideally, and again, this is just my, my interpretation of this, is that these things that used to build this anger, cause anger in these situations, when you're in those situations, you no longer do that by God's leave. And hopefully, it completely subsides, and you see that this another never happens anymore. That's the goal, right? Maybe at that some point, you, I put question mark, is that, what, and maybe we can talk about this more in Quran studies, is that what, what, we're, what we're striving towards? when we reach movement status, so that these things don't trigger you anymore. It's very few, it's very small at the very tail of these graphs. You know, this is what we should be discussing and trying to get to uh, personally. Um, in the last few minutes, I also want to talk about a concept that um, I also believe is beneficial, and this is kind of taken from my background a little bit, in internal audit. But in risk management, if you really look at what sins are, you're managing the risk of committing a sin. So you can apply that to your own life. And in this concept, we call them controls, right? So you want to have a control in place that is a mechanism to help you understand that you commit this sin. It tends to happen. 
and you want to try and mitigate it. You want to try and get rid of it. So there's two ways to look at it. You can be reactive to it, so it's happened, and now you look back and you say, okay, what can I do better? Or you're proactive and you look forward and say, well, in this situation, it may happen. I'm going to try and manage it. Reactive is awareness after the fact. Proactive is awareness before. So it's simple in that regard. So reactively, we know the system, right? It is, you reflect once it's happened, you repent, and you reform. And if you need to, you proclaim as well. That's reactive, and that's a control we can put in place, and I'm sure we're all doing it. Well, I hope to God I know that I need to do it more often. It's something that we employ, right? What could we have done differently in a situation if it is anger, for instance? How can you become more aware in the moment if it's happening or right before it's supposed to happen to avoid that anger? That's reactive, right? Proactively, how can you avoid these situations? Or if you're going to be in this situation, what practices can you employ knowing that you're going to be in a situation where it's happened before? And I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm not saying I, we can predict the future. But it's being conscious of that. It's being aware, which is the theme of this sermon. And then specifically, what tactics work for you to actually be cognizant in the moment when you feel like you could be slipping? So I'm sure we all have great mechanisms to share. I would love to hear more of these. We can share them in Quran studies and conversations. But these are things that we should be thinking about. And awareness covers that whole spectrum of conversation there. Um, this verse really sums it up perfectly in 38. Why do they not reflect on themselves? God did not create the heavens and the earth and everything between them except for a specific purpose and for a specific lifespan. However, most people with regard to meeting their Lord are disbelievers. We're told to reflect, to be aware about ourselves. We're told to, be, to understand what the purpose is here, as we had mentioned earlier. Because we know that believers set the example, not only for each other, but you should be setting it for your future self, right? We should be constantly looking back and saying, oh, I am doing better. Set the example consistently because you're being aware. And so... Yes, 2160 as well. As for those who repent, reform, and proclaim, I redeem them. I am the redeemer most merciful. Um, so, you know, in summary, if you imagine that this year in review exists for you, for your year in submission, can you honestly say that you prioritize your religion and God this year? Can you say that you were intentionally aware of your thoughts, of your actions, of your utterances as they were happening? after the fact, or in the future, when they may happen. There's an endless list of things that we can do to improve by God's grace to purify ourselves. The journey of soul growth never truly ends until we are summoned back to God. So this is something that we can continuously work on. You know, the areas I mentioned today are really just a few places of note where we can start or continue to strive. So this is where we want to continue to be aware and build upon it. So each, and, each uh, and every single day is another day to strive and intentionally increase our awareness of how to become a better submitter, to grow our soul uh, that much more. And inshallah, make it back to God. That's really the purpose, right? So with that, Akimo Salat, let us pray. Allahu Akbar. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah hirabil alamin ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Maliki al-Madin. Ya kana badu ya kana stayin adna sarat al-mustaqim. Sarat al-Din anumta alayhim gar maktubi alayhim ala dalin. Allahu Akbar. Sami Allahu liman hamada. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Hirabil alamin. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Maliki al-Madin. Ya kana badu wa ya kana stayin. Adna sarat al-mustaqim. Sarat al-Adina anumta alayhim. Gar maktubi alayhim malat dalim. Allahu Akbar. 
Sami Allah Huli Muhammad. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. I really want to emphasize how good of a job it was. Thank you. Congrats, bro. Did you like it? Okay, did it make sense now? Yeah? Mashallah. All right, one more. One more. There we go. Hey, congrats, bro. Mashallah. Hey, bro. Dang, you, this is actually one of my sermon ideas. Mashallah. Oh, really not good exactly this, yeah. but I'm very close. Thank you for your help, bro. Now, now, you took, now I have to go. Don't take any drink. Give it back to I Irene. It. You know, I love it. Congrats, Mashallah. I love it. Thank good sermon. Mashallah. Good you. stuff. Very good sermon. Hey, you did a good job also with the uh, day. Yeah, Mashallah. That's great. I took a little bit of time, though. Thank God. Thank you guys. Good job. You guys leaving now? What's up?